Are you playing Color Dragons and hoping to gather the most amount of resources for your account? Well, guess what? I've finally made a guide for you guys to maximize the easiness to get all the resources you want as fast as you can and obviously benefit and grow as fast as you need. Because again, you need those resources to upgrade for your tech, your troops, and your buildings to unlock those tier five troops, right? So I've got you covered. I hope you enjoy today's guide on how you can improve your gathering experience in Call of Dragons. Hello, yes, yeah, smash like, comment, and subscribe for more daily videos with me, Mr. Sneaker. And guess what? I'm here with everything to help you gather. And you know what? We've done a PC setting slash setting guide video, which I covered a load of stuff on how to improve your Color Dragons experience, right? And a lot of people ask about gathering, how you can gather faster, because you need, obviously, resources. And to be honest, I was really, really low, and I've already gone up to 70 million within a couple of days, right, on gold. And you can see I've already kind of got a little bit of everything else apart from mana. We're gonna work on that, don't you worry. But how have I done this, right? And there's a few things that you can do in game which actually helps you. And I'm gonna go over one quick secret setting that I think a lot of players don't realize exists in this game and I don't know if you have it equipped who knows right but what you can do is actually go quickly into the settings area and go to customizations right and obviously you got all the features and if we actually scroll down we're going to go all the way to the point where we can see where it says hide purchase info but then there's one straight below it and this is the the the, the creme la creme honestly Prioritized capacity when deploying gathering legions. Make sure this is ticked. Because what this always does, no matter what, it always allows you to, when you send any troops out, so if I were gonna send, for example, these, and I just recall these two troops just for a quick little demonstration. No matter what I'm gonna do here, if I, for example, was gonna send, if I go to this and gather, send my troops, it's, it's gonna obviously send the right amount of load capacity. Even if, for example, I just put one, so there's only 1,000 left, sometimes if you don't have that option equipped, what happens is it will still equip the 1,000 on the next match, right? So if I go here and go to gather, it will do this weird gathering thing, right? Um, when it, on the here, where I only have like this really slow capacity. Because I have that option ticked, as you guys saw, because I have the option ticked, it automatically selects the next best unit and gives it the correct amount of units for the load capacity. So I don't have to worry about it and I can send that away. So that's a really good little technique. So you don't have to keep trying to, you know, like toggle all your different resource, you know, units and stuff like that. You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff because you can easily now by, if you just, if we do it properly, we can just send our marchers home like this hit the gather button and create legions and it's automatically doing the correct amount for us so we always know now we're good right so that's a really good big tip straight away that you guys need to take advantage of use that setting and i'm telling you it's gonna make your life just easy you're gonna thank me later because you didn't realize that existed so let's go into the next part which is obviously your alliance resource center so this Alliance Resource Center is the, honestly one of the, if not the best way you can get resources if you're not located into certain areas which we're going to talk, discuss about. But if you are in a, an Alliance, obviously you can make these Alliance buildings. It will require your Alliance to complete the necessary tech, which is in obviously the development section where you can get all the different gold repositories. And then more importantly, in the territory tech, you're gonna need to do this to unlock the gold mines and then increase the levels or the reserves of them. And if you can keep going further on, you can unlock mana, right? Which is really, really powerful. So you can get all that big mana. But what you can actually do, which is really, really good as well with these um, gathering areas is actually use the artifacts, right? So everyone knows you get artifacts, but the one which you should always, always send to these is your green finger sickle. No matter what, it's immediately going to gather out of there, depending on obviously the level of your green finger sickle, these amount of resources, right? Which is really, really nice. You instantly get there as soon as you go in and it's coming out of the Alliance Resource Center and it's not just going to break your tiles, right? Because 
I'm going to talk about the importance of tile management in a moment, right? So I just want to make sure you guys know this. It's, I know it's kind of basic. Some of you guys might be like, why are you talking about this, Mr. Sneaky? But I want to just cover all the bases so you guys know how to farm efficiently, at least with these two areas, right? With the basic setting on as well as the Alliance Resource Center. Just make sure you're doing those two things and you're gonna be good as golden, at least at a minimum stage, right? So let's go into the next phase, which is actually about your resource management and let's go into the heroes and gathering trees, right? And that will give you the, the advanced section, how you can actually maximize now on gathering so let's talk about tile management now, because this is how you can actually get your really high resource yields per day, right? Because obviously everything works on a timer. And one thing I need to give you guys now, a quick disclaimer, right? Your gathering time is gonna be dictated on your current position in the season. What does that mean? It's pretty simple. When you first start, obviously, in the game, you might not have very strong heroes or you might not have really good artifacts, right? Even if you look at my gathering artifacts, I've still got them really high leveled up, the ones with high gathering speed. They're, that's the kind of little gimmick I'm gonna talk about later on, right? But you might not have the same access to stuff that I do, right? but that doesn't change the basic philosophy. So what you wanna do is obviously know how long it takes to get one of these resource tiles, right? So what you wanna do is pretty simple. Make sure when you get one of your units and we send them to gather one of these tiles, we need to see how long it is, right? Because that is gonna obviously dictate our timer um, for the future on how we need to log in, right? So make sure when we go into you know, sending a gatherer, we all just put one gatherer with obviously just a normal person. I'll talk about that in a moment why. Um, but we're gonna now display this timer and this is where we're gonna start to basically excel and become superpower farmers in the game. Because if we now know how long this tile takes and we now send all five units to get the same tile, it means we're gonna get maximum, you know, yielding. So we know in three hours and seven minutes, basically, this is gonna complete for our account. So basically within three hours, all of our five marchers will return if we send them all to level six tiles. This can go quicker, right? So this is on a level six tile, three hours and seven. But if this tile here was on our obviously alliance territory, it will be quicker. Obviously we're not in this alliance, but you can see this is three hours and three minutes, a little bit less, right? And um, just because of our heroes, just to, just to showcase that if we go over here, obviously we've got a wood gather speed bonus, right? So that's why it's a little bit faster compared to the gold when you're looking at that difference here on screen, don't get confused. But if we was on territory, this would be faster, which is really important because when you are gathering resources on you know, territory, you're gonna gain a 25% bonus. So now you're gonna cut that time by basically a quarter, right? Which is really, really good. So instead of three hours, I'm thinking it's gonna be what? Two hours and like 30 or 15 minutes, something like that, I don't even know, right? Uh, yeah, about, no, it's about two, two hours, 15, yeah around that time. So you know if you're farming now six tiles on your territory, you've now got to log in around two hours, 10 minutes, and then everyone's gonna come home, right? Then you can send them out. So that's just basically learning now, and I've un explained how you can now go with your farming marches and maximize instantly on gathering, right? So now how can you speed it up even further? Pretty simple. We now need to talk about the artifacts, the gathering talent tree, and more importantly, the one thing which you should always have online if you can, the gathering enhancement, right? The gathering enhancement's giving you a 50% increase of gathering speed, which is absurd, guys, for 24 hours. And you can see I've got just an, ins an abundance of these, right? I never run out of these. I just keep getting more and more. So you're gonna get these all the time. So don't be afraid to use them. You know, if you are running low for 24 hours, just pop the eight hour ones, right? It's fine, just pop the eight hour ones. You're gonna be cooking and you're gonna be happy as days, right? So just make sure you are obviously maximizing on that. 
So the artifacts, this is what the, the next section I want to go into before we go into the heroes and talent trees, because the artifacts is pretty simple, I think. You only want to invest into artifacts personally with the highest gathering speed. So that means anything like this Lucius Horn, this gives you gathering speed. Really, really good artifacts. So honestly, power up. So once it's level 60, you don't have to do it again and you've got maximum gathering speed now on that artifact, right? You can go down if you look at something like Ancient Tree Roots. This has Legion Load Capacity. You're going to realize Load Capacity is not an issue. You will not worry about Legion Load Capacity because I'm going to explain that in the Hero section and the Talent section, right? Um, then if you go down, you're going to again see all the different artifacts and again, Legion Load Capacity. It's... It's okay, the only thing the green finger sickle gets away with, and you could maximize this to level 50 if you want, is because again of this special effect, so you can actually hold more when it's in the Alliance Resource Center. It's really good if you're in a really like, like quiet, or if you go into a farm, you know, Alliance, and you just go into the Alliance pit, and you might get a full yield of like 7 million resources. That's really good, right? So you could do something like that with the green finger sickle, but I wouldn't advise it in general for the load capacity, you know, based uh, artifacts. But if we carry on though, you're gonna notice again, there's still some more artifacts and you'll see there's still one more and you can max this. This is a level 31, you're gonna get really, really quickly. It will give you again, overall gathering speed. The other ones gives you Legion load capacity and this is Legion load capacity as well. So you're gonna see the theme is you want as much gathering speed as possible. So you can just maximize those three artifacts or two artifacts that give you the um, legion gathering artifact speed and then you can go and work on your green finger sickle for obvious reasons um, for the resource center and you're good as golden and if you're wondering how you can get those artifacts a really good way is obviously when you come out and you press the search function you can go to the search function search for these dark chests if you're not strong enough yet to do the epics you can always go to an elite one no harm in killing track these four units to get two chests and repeat this and you can get all of these and this is how you're going to get your ancient tree roots as well as your lucius horn you can again search for the uh, epic ones these will give you now if you look um your uh, staff of spring as well as karate's wrath now you don't really care about those ones but if you go to the advanced ones the advanced ones give you the green finger sickle and lucy's horn so these ones are actually really really good if you want these two artifacts so just remember that right so that's all of those guys covered. The, the last artifact that we need to talk about, which you've noticed, is going to be Lucy's Horn. This is, again, overall gathering speed. It's the best one, in my opinion, you can earn and level up for free. Why? No matter what, at the start of the season, at the end of the season, you will always summon a level 7 tile. So instead of going for levels 5s, level 6s, you're going for level 7s. Lovely. Like, I don't, I don't have to explain this, right? Really, really good. So, you're going to gain this. The only thing you have to make sure when you're using this artifact is you're on your own alliance territory so it can spawn it, right? So, that's the only thing. So, let's now go into the heroes, talent pages, and finish up the gathering guide so you guys can now max power gather like I've been doing. So, we've got the legions on screen. Why? We're going to be looking at that big 95k. That is how many work elks I own. Literally, I've never earned any more. You might want a little bit more. I'm just going to be honest. You might want 100 and maybe 10k, 115k. It's not, not the end of the world. Because whatever work elks don't use, generally your infantry is going to be the ones right your infantry are going to take over the work elk role for gatherings it's not any of the world right so if you don't have that many it's okay but even with ninety-five thousand work elk that allows me no matter what to send five marches out currently at level seven eight or nine basic tiles whatever the highest tiles are at in the game I can always max gather and still have a little bit spare over for my workhorses. How? It's just because of how much basically like load capacity you're gonna earn 
from levels. I'm honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you, you earn a lot of load capacity through levels. So when you have your heroes now, what you wanna do if you really, really wanna maximize your gathering is try, obviously you can do different methods where you send five marchers out to farm, five gold tiles or five wood, five stone, whatever you need for the day, you just keep going for that one and you switch it up. You can do that method, that's really cool. Or if you're one of those guys that like to do a bit of gold, a bit of wood, you know, a bit of everything in one scene, what you wanna do is make sure you know your gathering heroes. And what I mean by that is obviously all your gathering heroes actually have their special trait, as you wanna call it, in the secondary tree. So you got a gold gather speed bonus on Keller. So if you want gold quicker, make sure you always send Keller for gold. You have Pan here and Pan has a wood gather speed of 20%, which is insane. And then if we go down, we've got Auto. Auto is your ore, so basically stone gathering speed. And he has a nice little bit of Legion load capacity on top of all of that. And then the Queen of Queen, you have Indus, right? So Indus is gonna give you a word gather speed as well. And that is all of the major um, gatherers. We have order to talk about too, but the problem with order is he is a gatherer because he has the mana gathering speed bonus on the skill three. But the issue is he doesn't have the actual gathering talent tree. And we can't actually use that because the way we wanna gather really, really quick is actually abusing the gathering talent tree. You can use him, I'm gonna be honest, if you wanna use him, go ahead. I'm not gonna hate on him. Um, I personally just use a random march instead of this guy, and you know, like an Eliana or something, and she goes out and farms for me. I don't mind, right? Um, but let's go into the talent tree, because the talent tree for the gatherers is pretty self-explanatory in the first instance on what I run, and then I'm gonna explain the secondary tree that you guys can understand a little bit easier, and it's a little bit more advanced when we go into that section. So obviously here, we're gonna be focusing on two main things, gathering speed and movement speed. They're the two main factors you need. Why? The faster you can get to a tile and the faster you can get back from the tile. So getting there and forth is making you farm quicker, as well as the gathering speed is gonna be essential because again, load capacity is not gonna be a problem because if you really cared about load capacity, just train more workhorses. I'm not gonna be brutal guys, like just train more workhorses, you'll be fine, right? Um, until then, just work with some infantry and workhorses until you get to that stage. But you don't need load capacity. You're gonna fulfill that over time. So what, if you wanna really, really power farm, what you're gonna do is obviously get the whole trinity of the gathering speed, the movement speed, and the Earth's grace, right? And now we're going into this talent tree and you can see I'm already going quite deep into it. And that's because I'm gonna explain how I perceive the talent tree um, for like my final build, which is this one, which you can see now. And then afterwards, we're gonna go into other stuff, right? So here we've got basically the payoff of quick harvest and windfall. Windfall is the one that you care about because anytime you actually go and farm anything in this game and you get the gathering report, you can see now we're getting these free random resource bundles. You might not think it's a lot because it's only these small amounts, but this adds up guys. These keep adding up and adding up and adding up. And this is only because of my heroes having access to that talent tree. So the way we're doing this is again, go straight up the middle. The reason why is because we're getting some Earth's Grace. We need to take this for the XP amount. And then movement speed, as you can imagine, 25% is really, really nice. It's just really that fast there and back. And then what we're doing is a very sneaky trick here. We are increasing our load capacity by 25% on purpose because we are taking quick harvest. And the reason why we're doing this is because we're purposely saying to ourselves, we're only having 15% load capacity here to give us ourselves another 20% flat gathering speed. So that is the reason why we're doing it this way. And that allows us then, what I do is to get more transport march speed to you even quicker. And then you go up the tree to get your gathering speed increased, the amount of XP finished, and then you have windfall. So you complete your build. 
So now you get to the tree where I am at. So what we're gonna do is go to this screen because this is where you can start to see the differences, right? Because what I would suggest is pretty simple. You go all the way up here and now you're at this stage and you're gonna have three choices to go down for your build, right? And the reason why I'm talking about three different choices is because it is gonna be situational on your area you're playing in. So if you are playing in a pretty easy going farm heavy zone, you know you can just power up. Guys, just take Logistic Master, take Earth Grace and take Windfall. Nice and simple. But if you are in a war zone, there's different things you can take because you can increase your load capacity here as well, as well as this cool undeterrent, which means is you allowed you to basically never be interceptors. If someone goes to attack you and you pull your troops back, if they try to walk in front of them to stop them and block them, they can't. This allows your troops to always go through units to make them home and hopefully you're faster than your opponents, right? So that's the, the cool thing about this. However, I personally prefer the other trees. If you are really in a war zone, you're getting farm killed, you're not liking it, you should be taking leeway, which increases the amount of time that you are basically, um, <clears throat> that increases the amount of chance that your troops recall automatically, which is very cool. Because what this means is if we max this out, if I am away and I'm playing or I'm, you know, working, I'm studying, I'm doing whatever my job is, whatever I am in real life, like you guys would be doing, right? If we're doing any of our normal stuff, what this means is if someone goes to attack us and they initiate combat, we have a hundred percent chance, no matter what, our march is going to start marching home. <clears throat> and then on top of this, you will then take obviously joyful labor. And this is a very powerful one because again, if you activate this joyful labor, when you get hit by a normal attack, what's gonna happen is you're gonna start marching home as well then for 10 seconds, you will take no damage. So it's a very, very cool little effect here that you can have on your march. And then you can obviously take this little upgrade, which is windfall. However, there is another way I'm gonna showcase a very spicy build, which is very similar to what we just discussed, um, but includes the intercepts, because again, I don't wanna just throw the intercept one out the bus and show more love just to that one little PVP build compared to the other. So if you wanna go for the other PVP build that we was talking about, it's pretty simple. We're gonna go and get transport speed again, all the way maxed up, bam, 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 bam. So now we get the overall capacity and then we get undeterred. And this is only one point. And this is where we might have a problem now because obviously, you know, we need to get into this area and we, we need it, right? So what we actually do is pretty simple. We will put four points into the, the little area, unlock it. And what you should do now, if you've gone this undeterred route, is actually go leeway so you can now, no matter what, you know, if you get attacked, your troops will always come home. They will never be intercepted, so you know they can't get blocked. And then on top of this, when you finish it, you will get joyful labor. And that means, again, you will take no damage for 10 seconds. So this is in a war zone. You will take these four talents, no matter what, all together once you complete the, the talent tree. Just to make sure you guys can farm and, you know, your troops get home and don't get farm killed by those pesky farm killers right but if we're back in the realm where i am at you can go honestly anywhere with this i'm perfectly trying the war banner on my keller just in case i use keller a lot for the um alliance resource pits a lot so i want her to have more legion capacity so i can benefit more from the resource pit so that's the reason why i've gone for the war banner here but honestly, if you really want to maximize your gathering, you really just want to get gathering speed bonuses. So if you go back down here, you can get the mana gathering speed bonus, you can get the ore gathering speed bonus, you can get the wood, you can get the gold. It's up to you. Whatever you want to farm more efficiently, you can go for that. Just remember, Keller is gold. So if you wanted, you should go for the veteran goldsmith to double up on her skills with her talent pages and you're gonna be good as gold right and i would just repeat the exact same talent tree 
on every hero. So again, we're here, we've got this hero. You can see I'm actually running the exact same thing. I tried on something a little bit different here where if I get attacked, I can recall my units, but I didn't like this without obviously any of these little bits and bats here. So this is kind of the regret, and this is why I'm talking about the killer tree more um, compared to anything else, right? So I hope that helps you guys. I'm not gonna lie, I hope, I hope that helps you guys. Cause now even with Pan, you know, I can just go here and get the Lumberjack one. I can, you know, go to, for example, our order and sadly cry. You might wanna use order for the Alliance resource pit, you know, he's got, you know, ma mana gathering speed. He has the Legion load capacity bonus, put the green finger sickle on him. So he's got even more Legion load capacity bonus. It might be the way to go and then focus on the other four commanders on the actual tiles, right? So that, that's pretty much it. That's how you, honestly, guys, can maximize the best on gathering. If you really want to gather, power gather, you can. I've been gathering as a ton of gold, as you can see. My reports are coming in. Like, it's just, it's just so fast. Like, once you get going and you just focus up. So that's it. Just make sure you're in a schedule, know your timers, Pick your right heroes, send out your guys to resource farm the right tiles, and you're good as gold, right? You're going to be punching through and you're going to be farming away. So I hope you guys have enjoyed today's in-depth gathering guide. It's hopefully covered everything that you're going to need. If I've missed anything out or you guys have got some other cool tips, just put me in the comments below, right? And we're here to help everyone out in this community and hopefully become the better Call of Dragons player they always want to be obviously for their alliance. So if you've enjoyed it, smash like, comment and subscribe and until the next one, stay safe, stay sneaky guys and peace out.